So measuring the currently used memory is crucial for optimizing algorithms or debugging any memory leaks. Also it can be really helpful if you want to benchmark different algorithms and compare them with each other. Luckily Go's runtime package makes things easy for us if we want to measure the currently used memory. That's why in this quick video we're going to have a look at and how we can actually effectively measure the currently used memory in Golang. And by the end of this video, you will actually have a good understanding how this process really works. First, it is important to know that you need to understand the difference between a stack and a heap. And I assume that you understand this difference. Also, it would be pretty good to know if you would know how the garbage collector in Golang works. But if you don't know how the garbage collector in Golang works, don't worry, I will probably make a separate video just for this garbage collection thing in Golang. Alright, so without further talking, let's get straight to the point and straight into the code here. Alright, so we do have here a plain Golang project without any further additions. So we just use here the standard library of Golang. And what we're going to do first is just go ahead and create a new function. And let's just call it print memstats, right, to print the memory statistics. And then let's just focus first on the main functionality here. So what we want to do is we want to print the memory statistics before a huge allocation is happening in the memory. And then we also want to print the memory statistics after that huge and gigantic memory allocation actually happened. So what we can do is just make a simple print line statement, right? So we say print line and then we say memstats before and then we call the print memstats function here and then let's just copy these two lines and paste them right below and then say memstats after something like this right so to demonstrate a really huge memory allocation we can just create an empty slice with, for instance, millions of entries. So how we can do this? It is pretty simple. We just make use of the make function here. And then we declare as a type that this should be an in slice. And the size should be 10 million. And by the way, just a quick tip here, if you want to make your larger numbers more readable, you can always make use of this underscore here, right? So this is 10 million, but you can also say 10 million like this. Obviously, with the addition of the underscore of the separation, this number is clearly easier to read. All right, and then we just iterate over our empty slice or slice of 10 million entries right and then we just say s at the position i is equal to i so here we simply declare our slice and initialize this slice with 10 million entries all right so let's get started with our print memstats function here so let's jump back up and how we can actually measure the memory statistics of our current application it's pretty easy we can just make use of the runtime package here and this runtime package gives us some options to measure the memory statistics. So there is a struct called memstats, and we are going to take a look at this struct in a minute here. But all it represents really is just a struct that contains different struct fields that have different descriptions of how the memory is described, right? So let's have a look at the struct here. So what we see is, for instance, the alloc size, right? And this is the description here of the alloc struct field, which is basically is bytes of allocated heap objects, right? And we want this. And there are a lot of more fields like total alloc. We're going to make use of this as well. But there are really a lot of fields you can use and you can basically make use of to describe the memory uh, in more detail. Right, but obviously this is not enough. Right? Well, what we did here is just to create an empty struct, which is of type memstats. What we need to do is to call runtime.readmemstats, right? And this function actually implements the logic to read the memory statistics. Right, and what we can do here is just pass in the reference to M. And this is basically it. Right? What we got now is our memstat struct populated with all the memory statistics that this function actually computes. 
All right, before we actually print the alloc size, for instance, we've actually seen in the memstat struct, we are going to create a little or a small helper function, which we call b2mb, right? And this function takes in a un64, which we will call b, because it stands for bytes, right? And it will return a un64. Now, why do we use the un64 here? It's pretty simple, because the memstat struct actually contains only UN64s, right? And we are making use of this and um, to be as compatible as possible with this struct here. All right, and to basically convert bytes to megabytes, we can just divide the bytes by 1000 to get kilobytes. And then we divide it again by 1000 to get megabytes. Right? This should be pretty basic and pretty basic math here as well. Now we can also divide here by 1024 and again by 1024. But in the end, this is the binary prefix, right? And what we actually use is the SI unit. So we use the decimal form kind of. So this is just a quick side note here to understand. All right, so let's get back to the original topic here, which is to print the memory statistics. Now let's create some printf statements here. And what we're going to print first is the alloc, like I've said earlier. And then we are going to make use of b2mb, so the function, and then we're going to pass in here m.alloc. And like I've described earlier, m.alloc just returns the currently allocated heap objects. Now this basically means that this struct field describes the memory currently in use by our program. Right, which obviously fluctuates as objects are being allocated and freed up. Now a use case on how you would actually use this field could be to maybe detect some kind of maybe memory leak or a large allocation, right? Because there might be a sudden increase in this struct field, right? In the allocated heap objects. Now another field I want to talk about is the total alloc size. So let's say total alloc. Now, and what this total alloc field actually describes is it kind of describes the cumulative bytes allocated for heap objects. Now, this just means that it describes the total amount of memory we've allocated since our program started. So in the end, it really or this struct field really only increases but never decreases at any time when our application is running. So in the end, this is sort of a counter of all the memory ever allocated by our program. And the use case would be pretty easy to basically just understand the total memory allocated for our application, right? To just measure how memory intensive our application is. All right, another field I want to talk about is this is field. Now this field sounds kind of strange, right? But all it really is, is that it kind of describes the total bytes of memory obtained from the system. Now this includes both heap and non heap memory, right? And in the end, it includes all the memory that the runtime basically has obtained from the operating system. So in the end, this field can be really seen as the total footprint of our program in the system's memory. Right. And this usually is larger than the alloc field because it includes memory reserved, but not necessarily used. Right now, the last field I want to talk about is the GC field. Now, we don't need to convert this to megabytes here. We just say GC and then num. So num GC is the field. Sorry about that. Now, and this field pretty much describes the number of completed garbage collection cycles. So this field is increased whenever the Go compiler cleans up or the Go garbage collection cleans up memory that's no longer being used. So I'm going to show you how we can actually enforce the garbage collection Golang in a minute here. Now use case on how you would actually can use this field would be that, for instance, frequent garbage collections might indicate high memory pressure, for instance. Right? So you can kind of make use of this field to collect some data about the garbage collection. All right, so let's go back to our main function and let's just maybe start our program here. And what we got is the memstats before, right? So we got sys, which is six megabytes. 
right? And memsits after we've got the heap, the allocated heap objects is actually 80 megabytes. The total allocation is 80 megabytes because obviously we didn't initialize or allocate any more heap objects. Now the sys field, the sys struct field has actually the value 91, right? So this is the memory allocated for our application. And then the garbage collection cycles actually is only one. So there was already one garbage collection going on here. Now you might think how we can actually test this numgc field. And it's pretty easy. We can just say runtime.gc. And this gc function manually triggers the garbage collection in Golang, right? So we don't have to wait for the garbage collection. Now this gc function tries to reclaim all the allocated memory, right? That is not being used in our application. Now I highly recommend to not call this function in production at any time because it can really negatively impact the performance of your application or of your Golang application here. Right, so let's just quickly print our memory statistics and then change the print line here again to something like memstats after GC. Right, and let's just run our application one more time and what we get is the memstats after GC, right? So the allocated heap objects are actually cleared now, right? So this was the garbage collection. The total allocation is still valid because this describes the total cumulative described allocation of the heap objects, which is obviously still 80 megabytes. And then the important part now is the number of GCs of garbage collections, which is now increased to two. Right, and this is how we can basically manually trigger the garbage collection in Golang. Now, if you also want to know where I actually use this memory measuring technique in Golang, I highly recommend watching this video here. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day and bye bye.